Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. I've got a custom build here. The client brought it in this morning. Uh, they finished building it last week, I think it was, and it didn't post, uh, and they're at a loss. So uh, let's see if we can get this thing running for them. Um, I believe it's, uh, I think this is an existing computer that's just been upgraded. We've got a Ryzen 2, um, well, it's a Ryzen 5 2600, I think he said it was. So Ryzen 2, basically. Um, so uh, this could be tricky because I don't have any Ryzen parts, but we'll see what we can do. Reasonably nice case. I haven't seen one of these Cooler Masters. Shame about the crappy window on it. When I first saw the case, I was like, ooh, nice, tempered glass. But it's not. It looks, it's a tempered glass style full width thing, but it's just plastic scratches to hell. It's a pity. Right. Uh, so um, let's start getting a baseline for what this thing does when we power it up. Uh, that looks like a 1060 in there. Um, yeah, it's a 1060. So nice, nice-ish looking Asus motherboard. Yeah, uh, it all looks fairly sane to me. Can't see any major issues with the way it's wired up. Doesn't seem to be a lot plugged in, but then I guess you don't actually need very much. So yeah, sure, no problem. Uh, cool, let's plug in a mouse and keyboard, put some power on the back, and we'll see what it does. Oh, interesting, the motherboard is doing rainbow uh, without even turning it on. Let's switch over to the crane. You can see that in the bottom right there? That looks pretty. I have to admit, I do like the look of some of the Asus boards, I just don't like them as a brand. I've just seen, I don't know, uh, bad past. All right, so, Nothing out to the monitor. Uh, no hard drive light activity, so it doesn't look like it's trying to boot. Now, the information I do have from the customer, he reckons it's a problem with the way the CPU is fitted, so that's where we're going to be looking first. So we'll take it apart. We'll take the CPU cooler off. This isn't the Wraith cooler. It's similar to it, though. And uh, we'll see if we can see any problems under the CPU. Yep, okay, let's switch that off. Power out the back. And let's, yeah, take that cooler off. We've got some thermal paste stuck in some of the pins here. Let's go for the close-up. You can see where we've got some thermal paste on the pins. That might be enough to uh, upset it. Never really done specific tests to see how fussy CPUs are about this kind of thing. But we'll clean that up and we'll see if that makes a difference first. Let's see if it's that simple. Um, the socket itself, again, there's a little bit of, uh, little bit of smudge in there. So we'll use the um, we'll use the alcohol just to clean this all up a little bit, and we'll see what fortune that brings us. I'm aware that loo roll is not the ideal tissue to be using for this, but uh, it's all I've got at the moment because I haven't gotten any more uh, kitchen roll. It's fine. We'll make sure we brush all the fibers off. All right. Now we'll just squirt a little bit of IPA over that. Grab my toothbrush. And we'll just gently give that some brushy brushy. I've got to be a little bit careful not to bend any pins here. So we're just, just wiping them down. The alcohol will dissolve the uh, thermal paste. And so we literally just have to just brush it off. We don't have to scrub anything. There we go, that's all that's needed. That looks nicer. And now we'll just give the same treatment to the uh, uh, CPU socket there. Just squirt a bit of alcohol in there and just uh, wipe off this excess. Mm, a bit harder to get the toothbrush into there. Uh, 
Okay. Right, let's try that. Let's drop that guy straight back in there. I can see which way around it goes. Give it a bit of a wiggle. There we go. And just for posterity, that is indeed a Ryzen 2600X. And we'll just perch the cooler on top. We're not going to bother screwing it down because also we've got to rescue that back, back plate again. But uh, we'll just put that on top just so it doesn't burn up immediately. Not sure how much heat these Ryzen's kick out yet. I haven't really spent much time with one. Unfortunately, I won't have time to do any good testing with this one. This is a semi rush job. Rip, denied, still nothing. Okay, right, so we've gone for the low hanging fruit, which was the customer, uh, the customer theory. Uh, let's start getting systematic now. Right, power off, bare boot. Let's take out the graphics card. I'm hoping that I can use the motherboard's HDMI connector. I know that some of these Ryzen chips don't have onboard graphics which is really, really dumb, but I'm not sure which ones. Uh, no, I just quickly Googled it and no, the, uh, the, the Ryzen X series do not have integrated graphics, which is super annoying. I wish they would just put on like just some peasant onboard stuff just so you can post with no GPU. Because like there is a legitimate reason why you'd want a big fat CPU without the graphics, and having integrated graphics on the Intel CPUs is just so helpful, especially when troubleshooting. But yeah, I like Ryzen, but I just can't bring myself to recommend it yet. I want it to be really good, really I do. I want AMD to make a big comeback. I've always liked them, but ah. Nope, that looks like a no-go to me. So uh, we'll try swapping out the RAM next. Again, we've got the one side clamp RAM slots on this motherboard. Not a fan of these. If you have problems with your RAM seating, this is the kind of motherboard where it's gonna happen. It's not unique to uh, Asus either. MSI got a bad habit of using these sometimes. And I actively try to avoid them when I'm picking motherboards. I mean, they're not. It's not a. It's not a showstopper. They just seem to be more prone to issues. Right? Have we got any guide? Oh, there we go. A one, B one. So, according to the motherboard, there's our motherboard uh, dim slot order. So it's possible that these uh, dim modules are in the wrong place. So I'm going to shift them all up by one. And again, theoretically it shouldn't matter. Most, whoops. And theoretically it shouldn't matter. Most motherboards worth their salt will uh, will boot with memory in whatever configuration you drop it in there. And the configuration is just optimizing. However, now and then you get a fussy one. So, all right, let's give that a whirl. See if we get anything from it. Uh, we need CPU power again. We'll reroute this cable somewhere else when we've got this thing working again, because this isn't a good place for it to go, just trailing across the top like this. Nope, that is not a post. All right, let's try swapping the RAM out. As luck would have it, I happen to have some alternative RAM that is standing by. Spoiler alert, this is going into my new computer that I'm buying the parts for at the moment. Hee hee, excite, excite. Now, if I had to guess, I would say that the memory was in the right place the first time round, um, which is to say uh, A2 and B2 populated first. So I'm going to go for A2, because despite the numbering, um, going uh, 2 and 4, counting away from the motherboard, is, t is the typical correct ordering. All right, let's give that a whirl. Power on. Hmm. 
No, still nothing. Tell you what else I'm going to check. I'm just going to check these front panel wise. All of that here. No drive LED. Reset switch. Power and power switch. Yeah, those dudes are all fine. Just making sure the reset switch wasn't shorted to ground or anything like that and holding the computer in a reset state. And yeah, this guy's all keyed so it can't be plugged in incorrectly. Okay, <clears throat> um, right, we've got to try another power supply just in case. I don't think it's going to be the power supply. I think it's going to be a CPU or motherboard issue at this point. So we're probably going to be having a second look at that. But uh, we'll try the motherboard just to confirm that, well, sorry, we'll try the power supply just to confirm that that's not it. Uh, we'll leave the testing around in there at the moment just because we can. And let's go and get the big Antec. 1000 watts of overkill. Just because I don't think I've told you guys this story before. Um, I'm not a fan of big ass power supplies. I could do a whole video talking about it, but suffice to say, I think anything over 600 is silly. Um, and so the re and so my friends often say, Graham, if you think over 600 is silly, then why do you own a kilowatt power supply? And I say, because this power supply, my Antec kilowatt power supply is so silly that I will never be tempted to flog it off to a customer who needs a new power supply. Because the thing about running a computer shop is it's very easy to get into the bad habit of selling your testing parts. And then when you need to test people's computer, uh, you don't have any parts to test with. So the trick is, is to make sure that all of your testing parts are crap in some way. So either they're just really naff parts that you wouldn't want to sell to someone, like this graphics card, which is just, uh, well, it looks very pretty, but it just is old and you can't, you know, you can't run Minecraft on that. Um, or this power supply because, oh my God, why on earth would I put a thousand watt power supply into someone's computer? Um, so yeah, the reason, the other thing as well is that obviously now and then you will encounter a computer that requires an obnoxious amount of power. Like for example, an old AMD FX9 with a, you know, a Radeon 280X, 290X in it or something like that, where there are one or two extremely rare occasions where you will need more power than a small star. So uh, yeah, now and then it comes up. Okay, right, power on. We've got power to the CPU, power to the motherboard. And we've got our dancing lights down there. Let's uh, let's give this a whirl. Go. And now nah, it ain't the power supply either. Well, okay, I guess that CPU is coming back out then. I wonder if there's any heat on that. Just gonna have a quick look. Power off. Twist that off. No, that CPU is stone cold, which uh, doesn't sound promising either. That is stone cold. That feels like it's not even turning on. Hmm. Time for a coffee and a think. Hmm. So I was just thinking to myself, huh, I should probably take the motherboard out now and just bench test the whole thing, uh, see if it works outside the case. And then I thought, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. And I started looking along the back and I saw this. Schoolboy era, schoolboy era. Got to be really careful when fitting your motherboard to stop that happening. But you got to check every time you put it in. I wonder if it's that simple. So let's uh, back the motherboard out and we'll just straighten out that little indiscretion and see if that will sort us out. I mean, well, it could be, yeah. It's short on the USB port, more than capable of causing no post. I'm not sure if uh, there are any pins on the top part of the port there where it's actually shorted though, so I might be wrong, but we're gonna check it.
Right, and I'm just going to be lazy and stick in one screw just to hold everything in place while we test. We'll plug in the original power supply now because at this stage we've no reason to believe there's any issue with the power supply. Okay, we need that. We need the test graphics card. All right, let's give it a whirl. But it looks like we've still got no post. No, okay, well, I'm going to move the RAM one more time, just as some kind of last ditch, you never know. And I think it looks like the motherboard's coming out from this thing after all. Which might tell us more information, because, you know, if you find one, well... That's one scruffy bit on the build, but it doesn't mean that there's mistakes everywhere else as well. Oh, mother. i tell you what else I've forgotten to do. BIOS reset. I'm way too far into this repair video to have not done this. Always pop the battery. And also, just a friendly reminder, the, the reset jumper or resetting to factory defaults, not good enough. Take the battery out. It's the only true reset. Nada. Okay. Um, cool. All right. Let's try. I'm going to try moving the graphics card down a slot just in case. That's a real long shot, but you never know. And then after that, we're going to take the motherboard out and test it outside of the case. We're definitely up to the point of uh, bad motherboard or bad CPU here. And I'm not sure which it's going to be because, as you guys know, my rule here is it's never the CPU, except when it is. Um, however, on this particular, uh, on Ryzen, I have had, I have heard through friends cases of bad Ryzen CPUs, it happens. So, uh, you know, I'm not throwing that idea out the window. Power on, power on. Now, board's coming out. Right, any signs of problems on the back of the motherboard? I see no issues there. Wasn't expecting to see any, but you never know. We always do the look. And in terms of that USB port, as you can see, all the contacts are on the bottom of the blue tab. And on top, there's not actually anything there, so I don't think having that metal tab sticking into that port was actually causing any issues. Would have blocked him from being able to plug anything in there, but I don't think that was shorting anything out. So, hmm. Let's rig it back up and we'll see if we can get anything out of it on the bench. Okay, right, we're set up on the bench. Uh, we've got a beep speaker plugged in as well that's um, over here behind the uh, no signal. Let's see if anything happens. Power on, and I'm just shorting the power the power button pins. There we go. What's it gonna do? Nah, this thing's dead. Right, it's time for a new motherboard. I'm gonna go with the motherboard because it's never the CPU, except when it is, but it's never the CPU except when it is. Okay, so I went off to Amazon yesterday to buy a new motherboard to replace this one, and I was just looking at the listings thinking, hmm, do I need the X370 or the X470 chipset? And I thought, ah, I need an X470 because this is a 2000 series Ryzen, it's a Ryzen 2. And you'll notice that we have an X370 here right now. Uh, this is a brand new motherboard, 
um, that the customer bought. However, they got the old chipset, probably because it was about 40 quid cheaper, I would imagine. Uh, and that's why their new CPU doesn't work. This thing needs a BIOS update to support that CPU. So we've been barking up the wrong tree. It's been a compatibility issue the whole time. So I jumped on eBay and I bought an APU. Uh, this is an A8-9600, which should work uh, in the X370 board. So I can plug this guy into it, do a BIOS update, and then swap back out to the Ryzen. So that is what we're gonna do now. So let's pop this guy back out again. Now what I'll do is I will uh, I'll keep this AA so I have a spare CPU to test with because uh, um, because I'm in a local computer shop, obviously, it's very, very convenient to have test equipment on hand. And to be honest, the £40 that I paid for this CPU, um, especially being an APU, so this one's got the built-in graphics as well, um, it's, not a, it's not a king's ransom for, uh, for these kinds of parts. And uh, I, would qu I, quite, I will quite happily pay £40 to know uh, if uh, it's the CPU or the motherboard in advance. Right. This guy's brand new. It looks like someone just ordered it in error. Perhaps they bought it and then thought, wait, I didn't want a poxy little A8. I wanted a full fat Ryzen. Okay. Right, in it goes. And let's hook all of this back up again. So I can plug into the... Uh, motherboard's HDMI now. We don't need the graphics card, which just means that we can take another bit out of the equation. And let's plug the power supply back in. And we'll just pop that heat sink on top just to make sure that we don't uh, blow up any brand new chips. All right, that should be good to go. And we'll get the keyboard and mouse hooked up as well because there is a very, 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 very strong chance that this is going to post now. I'll be very sad if this doesn't post. I'm going to be livid if this doesn't post. Because I would have spent 40 quid on a CPU that I can't send back because I bought it on eBay. Right. Power. Fancy lights. Uh, game capture. And turn on. Yeah, boys, I just had a beep. There we go. F2 to enter setup. Or F1 now. Skedush. Beautiful. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Uh, okay, right, so I'm going to go into BIOS now. Let's uh, switch to the capture. Okay, let's do F1. Wow, look at this, this is a fancy BIOS. Nice. That's pretty cool. They can do so much in UEFI now, it's pretty, it's pretty impressive. Right, okay, so what I care about is the BIOS version. Where's the BIOS version? Ugh. Oh, there it is, BIOS version. BIOS version 3203. Okay, right, let's find out what the latest is. BIOS and firmware. Okay, there we go. Right, BIOS version 4011. Beautiful. That's what we want. What else have we got there? Just out of interest. See all downloads. So we were on 3203. So yeah, there's been quite a few BIOS updates to this. There we go. Version 3203. Update for new upcoming processors. Uh-oh. That's interesting. That kind of suggests that this thing was already supposed to support it. Let's check the compatibility list. I'm going to try doing this anyway, but let's let's find out. Right, what did we have? It was a Ryzen 5 2600X. 2600X, 3803. No, it does need a BIOS. Yep. So what the hell was the uh, 3203 upcoming CPUs? Maybe it was like a second wave of the first gen or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, let's get that latest BIOS. Problem solved.
Okay, all right, let's get that flash drive plugged into the back. Um, we don't have any USB 2 ports on this. If I, if I could, I'd plug it into a USB 2 port. However, I'm guessing it will be able to read from USB 3 anyway. Let's see now, can I, the question is, can I go straight into this now, into the BIOS update without having to reboot? Uh, right, let me see. Oh, we're going to want F advanced mode for a BIOS update, so let's uh, scroll down there. Uh, advanced mode, which is in the bottom right, just behind where my camera is. Okay, um, boot tool. Easy flash utility three Asus. Cool, let's have that. Ooh, via internet, nice. Uh, there's very few boards that have this. Um, I really like this where you can just download it from the internet. We'll do it via storage devices because we've already got that now. However, if I'd spotted that before, I'd have gone for that. Right, let's do this now. Uh, right. There it is. 4011.cap. Do you want to read this file? Yes, please. All right, BIOS information, Prime X370 Pro, version 4070. Cool, do it. Processing. All right, off it goes. Let's leave that to run. Right, I heard a beep. It's rebooting. It's rebooting again. Okay, let's uh, delete. Cool. Um, blah, blah, blah. F1 to run setup. Let's have one of them. All right, there we go. So we've got BIOS version 4011 in the top left now. So now if we switch over the CPUs, it should now boot with the uh, with the Ryzen 2600X in it. So let's uh, turn off the power. And let's swap out that CPU. All right, out comes the A8. And in goes the Ryzen. Do a quick test fire of this. And if it's all hunky-dory, we'll put on some nice fresh thermal paste and we'll bolt it all in properly. Okay, power and moment of truth. It's taking its time. It's taking too long. Oh, there it goes, it beeped. Memory error. Oh, we've got no graphics card. Needs the graphics card. There's no onboard GPU on the Ryzen. Let's go round again. Baby, we'll turn back the hands of time. Okay. Yeah, we go. That's more like it. That was a much faster post speed. And we've got a picture again. And let's have a delete for setup. And in the top left, ladies and gentlemen, we have an AMD Ryzen 5 2600X. Awesome. Nice. Okay, right, we are done. So now we've just got to rebuild this thing. So I'm going to go get some lunch. And then we're going to put this computer back together. There we go. That's our new CPU all mounted up. Nice tidy cable. Let's drop the other Corsair RAM module in while we're here as well. And I'm going to remove the cellophane because I'm a hater of cellophane. It's all got to come off.
Right, so here's our case. Um, I've given it a quick blast out. I mean, the fans at the front are a little bit grossy, but um, I'm not getting paid enough to go to town on those. They're fine. Uh, he can go over them with a toothbrush if he really wants to. Um, however, I am going to do a little bit of rearranging of the cables in here. Um, we can probably do a little bit better on these. The fan cables I'm not too worried about, but I do want to reroute this CPU power cable because this is coming up over here at the moment, which brings it over the top of the motherboard, which is just really a terrible route for it. Um, so we're going to reroute this up the back of the case behind the motherboard tray, and that will just vanish this completely. Um, and we can also just check sanity check the other cables around the back of the case just to make sure there's nothing out of order there, which there probably won't be because, you know, this was a, um, a, a built machine, but uh, we'll just make good on that. All right, that's that. Hmm. These cables aren't amazing, but they'll do, to be honest. There's nothing there that's particularly horrifying, so that's fine. Let's go with that. Uh, we may end up shuffling some of them about while we build anyway, so I'm not going to uh, get crazy with them right now. Okay, so now we've got our CPU cable up there. That's fine. That's fine. Um, that will be fine. We'll tuck that out of sight afterwards. Uh, right, these guys. Um, let's see if we can reroute these a little bit better. There we go. All right, that's those coming out of there now. And we'll tidy all that up once everything's plugged in. Uh, front panel stuff, yeah, that's fine. We'll tidy that up later. Audio, that, that can probably move along to the next hole. And what is that? Oh, that's uh, PCIe power. That's fine. That can float for now as well. Good. Uh, right, okay. I think we are all ready for a motherboard to go into this thing. And then we can sort all these plugs out. Also got USB 3 here. I think the USB 3 header on the motherboard is damaged, but it didn't look broken to me, so we'll plug that bad boy in and hopefully it'll work. And I'm gonna pull all of those back as well. Let's untie this bit and just sort that out. There we go, I think that'll do that. Let's flip that over and just make good on the USB 3 cable. These USB 3 cables can be particularly tricky to make good with. I'm just gonna sort of do a bit of that so it's bending sideways slightly just to take the slack out of the cable. This is a particularly awkward place to put the USB 3 header though. And it's got no, it should have one of these around it to help me guide the, the plug in as well. I feel like I'm gonna bend these pins. All right, and I'm actually gonna zip tie that to the bottom of the case just to take the tension out of it. Or rather to take the tension off of the uh, broken connector. There we go. That gives him USB 3 at the front again. And let's just do something about these guys. Good, right. 
Graphics card. And we'll just stick a uh, zip tie around that guy just to hold the um, extra two pins to the side so it doesn't look like that's flapping in the breeze. And this cable's got a big huge loop on it, but I'm not too fussed about that to be honest. Actually, can we do anything about that? Let's flip that over again. Ugh. We can bring that back to there, that'll loop. That's better. That looks a bit more controlled now. All right. There we go. Let's stick some side panels on that and make sure it works. And now that looks an awful lot tidier than it did before. Sweet. There we go. That thing is successfully booted up. Well, I, it's posted anyway. Uh, Windows, this Windows install has come across from another computer, so Windows 10 is having a hissy fit, but We'll give it 10 minutes to um, re-detect all the devices in the new motherboard and that'll be straight back onto the desktop again. So past that, we're all finished. Thank you very much for watching everyone. I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.